How's it going guys? So I've had this simulator in my home for the last three years and recently I've made some upgrades like my enclosure. I switched to the new Carl's Play C-Series enclosure. If you've been following the channel, I just made a custom golf themed PC and a few months ago I upgraded to a 4K BenQ LK936 ST projector. But the one thing that's been here since the beginning of my simulator build is this turf I'm standing on right here. I put this in when I first built this three years ago. It's kind of an eyesore with all my recent upgrades, having like these footwear marks from just basically where I stand and just hitting the ball. Um, so that's one thing that I really wanted to change and I just wanted to look nice and fresh. So I went on a quest to figure out what the best indoor putting turf. And I see a lot of people recommending money putt turf by grass tax. I gave them a call and had a conversation with them and just explained to them, you know, the problem with mine. And they said, based on the way that their turf is created, that that discoloration wouldn't happen. So basically this simulator is something that I didn't know in the beginning if I was gonna keep, but here we are three years later and I absolutely love this thing you know, if not more than I did when I first put it in. So this is here to stay and I don't mind investing a little bit more money into something that I would like to change like the turf. So in this video, I'm going to remove my old turf after three long years and I'm gonna install the brand new Money Putt Turf by Grass Tex and kind of tell you what my first initial thoughts are and what I think about it. I've also decided since I'm gonna do that anyway, I'm gonna change my custom hitting insert location just a little bit. I actually made a new one that's a little bit smaller. If you guys have been following my channel, I actually show you how to make this but because I'm doing this process I'm gonna have a separate video where I show you the new updated version of this it has been the best hitting insert I've had since I started this build and it's really affordable to make it yourself on top of that you get to make it to the specs that you want for your simulator one other thing I'm gonna be changing is the putting cups I have near the screen since I upgraded to that BenQ projector because it's further back than my old Optima, it does cast the shadow when I have the flag sticks in, it catches the top of them. So I'm gonna bring those in about six inches just so that's not happening and I can leave the flag sticks in without that shadow being there. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna roll this thing up, go through the whole process of installing this. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow. Let's get started. I'm gonna start by removing my old turf. You'll see how easy this is, is it just drapes across the top. I'm also removing the pieces where my hitting insert was and the putting cups and replacing with some fresh new pieces as I'm gonna start from scratch. Now I'm gonna start by laying out the new turf. When ordering this turf, it comes in 15 foot widths and then you order the other dimension that you need for your space. In my setup, the gym mat I used is 10 foot wide by 14 feet long. So I ordered a 10 foot cut of the turf, which leaves me with a 10 by 15 foot piece. So that extra overhang, I'm gonna trim off in the next steps and use that for my hitting insert. I'll leave a link in the description down below for the place I found with the best price on this specific money putt turf. All right, now I have the turf in place and my initial impressions are it is much darker than my previous one. I don't necessarily not like that it's darker. It'll probably be better for like watching movies, having a darker color, like reflecting less light, but it is noticeably a darker color. If you look at my previous one, and it's my old hitting insert, it has the same putting turf on top. Basically, if you watch my video of how to make this type of a divot board is that I would just replace this turf um, every couple months once it kind of got worn out. But putting it next to the other one, you can definitely see that it is a lot darker. It also is a lot flatter, which is good. I did hit a practice putt. The old putting turf rolled, I would say at about a nine stem, so kind of a slower speed. And the practice putt I hit on this, it rolls pretty quick. I would put it somewhere around an 11 stem if I had to guess. So keep that in mind. It did roll out nice and flat though, um, which is awesome. Another thing to notate is that, I'll put a link in the description from the company I bought it from. I did use my own money. I didn't get any special discounts or anything like that. But I looked online and they had it for the most affordable price uh, with shipping and everything, as there are a few people who do sell this. They were the most affordable. So I'll put their link down below. But I did order 10 feet. So these rolls come in 15 foot widths and then you order the other dimension that you need for your setup. So I ordered it to 10 feet and they actually cut it exactly at 10 feet. I know most turf suppliers, they give you like an extra four or five inches, maybe even a whole foot so you can kind of trim it yourself. Um, so if you are ordering this and you're working with a certain dimension, just know if you use the link below, it's gonna be cut exactly to that width that you selected. So if you have 10 feet one inch, you're gonna need to order 10 feet one inch. 
The good news is, is they have perfectly straight cut, so that saves me a lot of time. I don't have to mess with cutting it this way. All I have to do is just trim out the front and trim out the back. And the first thing I'm gonna do is when you get these kind of putting turfs, you'll have this like black material that overhangs um, off the edge. So I'm gonna cut that off first and then get it all fit to my screen. All right, so to cut it, I'm just gonna use a cutting board and this snap blade. This is what I've been using to make cuts for like my hitting insert and basically all types of turf. I recommend getting one of these heavy duty ones. I'll put a link on Amazon to where I got this one. It just has a really thick blade so it doesn't wobble on you and give you like wonky cuts. So you're gonna wanna just start by trimming off the black piece that overhangs the edge and you can just put your cutting board underneath it and then just carefully follow that line. And that cuts off fairly easy. You just kind of want to hold it at an angle so you're not cutting the turf and making it look jagged so everything stays nice and straight. And then you're going to proceed down the rest of the turf doing the same process. Just take your time, make nice straight cuts. It'll look better in the end if you put a little more effort into it instead of just, you know, ripping at it. So I'm going to finish cutting this one all the way down and then we'll jump over to the next step. All right, for the corner piece, you can kind of see the way that my enclosure is designed. It has this kind of angle right here up against where like the safety padding is. So what I want to do is make that same cut onto the turf so it sits nice and flush against it. So I'm just going to roll the turf back and just use an angle finder to figure out what that angle is. You just want to kind of line it up. And these are pretty cheap. You can get them just about anywhere. Um, but I also put a link on Amazon to where I got this one from. I got my angle there. Now I'm just going to grab a scrap piece of cardboard. And I'm going to transfer that angle onto the cardboard and mark that with a Sharpie. Right now that I have the angle of how that fits up against there, just grab that same cutting board I was using to trim the turf and cut that out. And now I can roll my piece of turf back. And you want to check it too and just make sure that it is going to be at the right angle. And it is. And then you could just proceed to cut your turf right down that line. And now I'm going to jump to the other side and do the same exact process. All right, it's going to be the same process for the other side. You can just take your same cardboard template and just flip it around the other way and then just check that that angle is the same and it is. And then we're going to do the same exact thing. Just throw a cutting board underneath there. Make sure it is lined up. All right, now that I have those cuts made, I'm just going to slide my turf up. The easiest way I think to do it is just to grab the whole turf, give it a nice pull. You can pull a little further than it needs to go because then from the other end, we can pull it back until it's sitting where we want. I'm gonna grab the other end now. All right, we got it in a good spot, so that's basically the hardest part. Cutting the holes out is easy. You'll see that on the next step. And then the hitting insert, you just have to be careful with, but again, we'll, you'll see that in the next step as well. All right, now that we have everything all square and you need to go around at this point and make sure that it is in the position that you want it in. Now I'm gonna cut off the length of this. I have mine 14 feet. So because it comes in a 15 foot roll or 15 foot width, I have that extra foot off the end, which is good because I'm gonna use that for my hitting insert top replacement. So the easiest method for this is you can just grab your turf, flip it upside down and kind of pinch it up against the edge and make a few marks all the way across. All right, and once you have those, you can take all those little marks you just made, roll your turf back, and then just grab a straight edge or like a long level and hold it across, lining up all those marks, and then just draw out your cut line. Now that you're sure that the line is marked in the right spot, you're gonna wanna grab your cutting board, put it underneath the turf, lining it up with that line, and you can use that same straight edge to hold it in place along that line, and then just keep repeating that process all the way across, sliding the cutting board over. And once it's cut, go ahead and just roll it back over and check and make sure everything is straight. It looks a little bit jagged, probably on camera. That's because a lot of this turf, when you're cutting it, kind of just balls up. So what I like to do after this now is grab some scissors and just cut all along this edge here and clean it up and make it look nice and straight. 
I have my turf all trimmed and cut and into place. The only thing to do now is to make my two cutouts for my putting cups. I'm gonna throw my projector on so I can make sure that they're far enough forward to where the projector isn't catching the top of them and casting that shadow. And then I have to figure out where my new hitting location is gonna be. It's gonna be pretty close to where it was before, but I'll have to make my markouts for that and then drop in my new hitting insert. This extra piece of turf I have, this is again, as stated, gonna be the replacement pieces for my uh, hitting insert. So I'm really hoping to see, and everything I've read is that this works really well for that application. So we'll see how that goes. All right, now with the putting turf in place, I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna put my putting cups. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is I have my projector powered on. I'm gonna place them in a spot and make sure, obviously they were too close last time, so it would cast this shadow here on the screen. So I wanna move them into a spot where I don't have that happening. This is sitting on top of the turf. This actual cup sits lower. So I have a, just a little bit of a shadow where it's catching the top, but I know that that's about an inch there. I can see the line where it's projecting on and this cup's gonna be sitting down more than an inch into the turf. So this will be a good spot here. And then you wanna make sure you have it over enough to where if you're a righty and you're putting, you're not standing off of your hitting surface. So this actually looks like a really nice spot here. I'm gonna mark that measurement and then I'm going to transfer that measurement to the other side so they're symmetrical and cut those holes out. Okay, with the flag in place, I'm just gonna take my washable chalk marker. I'll put a link down to this below on Amazon. This is pretty helpful because it just wipes right off when you're done. So you don't wanna use a Sharpie or anything like that. And I'm just gonna trace a rough line around the location of the flag. And these are birdie ball flags. You can actually get them and customize them, you know, put your own logo on them. Um, I also just use my decal printer to make my own stickers to put on there to just kind of keep the theme of the golf sim that I want to go with. And also from the same manufacturer birdie ball, they have these hole cutouts. You just want to apply a little bit of pressure and then with a the twisting motion, just go back and forth until you get that turf cut out. So now that's that's done, you have a nice clean hole and you wanna save this in case for any reason you wanna plug these holes back up later on. And now that that's out of the way, I can just take the same tool and I wanna just kinda of trace that same area and go all the way in to the gym mat. All right, I got a pretty rough mark out there, so I'm gonna roll the turf back. And now I can see exactly where to drop this back in. And the same thing, we're just gonna twist until we are all the way through. If you have like softwood floors, I have um, porcelain floors. Um, I would put a cutting board underneath there, but with porcelain, this isn't gonna hurt them. So I'm just gonna go through until I get this out. And there you go. Also, you wanna save this piece of gym mat as well in case you ever wanna plug that hole for whatever reason. And now that we have the hole exposed, I'm gonna grab my putting cup and you wanna feed this in from the bottom. So I can just kind of lift my gym mat up, throw it over there and then line it up. And once that's lined up, go ahead and just push the mat down into place. And then you could just throw your turf back over it. And I'm gonna go one step further and take some scissors and trim out the inside so it's nice and clean. And that's basically it. We have our new putting hole and grab our flag and just drop that into place. And you can see the measurements were correct and I'm no longer casting a shadow as I can see that line goes all the way across. So now I'm gonna jump over to the other side and get that one done. And I'm just gonna grab a towel with a little bit of water on it and wipe off that white washable marker. And it comes off with no problem. And that is basically it. Obviously when I'm done with all of this, I'm gonna vacuum everything out because there is some grass inside of these. But there you have it, no shadow casted on this side. We have two symmetrical flags and I really like the new location. So now we can move on to the hitting insert. All right, now the putting cups are in, it looks really good. So the last thing I have to do is make my cutout for my hitting insert. And whether you're doing a DIY hitting insert like the one I made, or if you're gonna buy a hitting mat or use a different one, the process is the same. You wanna find the center of your screen if you're able to hit directly from the center, which I am. And then determine the distance from the screen you wanna hit. I was about 8.75 feet from my screen. I wanna move my center location back to uh, nine feet. So I'm basically gonna measure nine feet from the screen and then I know this is 10 foot wide so my center is gonna be five feet here. Check the measurements and then we'll make the cutout to drop in the hitting insert. One thing to keep in mind is with this specific putting turf and with the 
uh, one inch gym mat. That leaves me at about one and a half inches high. So if you are buying a aftermarket hitting insert or a hitting mat, just know that you know you have one and a half inches of height if you wanna keep everything nice and flat which is another reason why I like doing the DIY method because then I can make sure I make it so everything sits nice and flat. And when I'm rolling putts, I can even roll it from my hitting insert without having it hop down or hop up. So let's get started marking those measurements and then cutting this uh, piece of turf out. All right, I got my center location of where I want the hitting insert to go. So I just put a little plus sign here or an X so I know where center is for my new hitting spot. And then I just hit a few shots from that location before I make any cutouts to make sure that I am right where I want to be because you don't want to make the cut wrong. I would say, you know, uh, measure twice, cut once. That's a big thing when you're doing these type of things. So again, whatever you have, you're going to lay that down, make sure it's center. So if I was gonna put my existing hitting insert in, I would get that all lined up where I wanted it to be. I would take that same white chalk marker and then trace it out. And then again, it is washable, so then I can check and say, okay, now I have my uh, hitting location. Do I like that spot? If not, I can wipe it off and move it again. But since I'm making a brand new hitting insert for this sim build, I made it just a little bit smaller than this and I'm in the process of making it now. They're really easy to make. I'm gonna have a updated video for my existing one that people have been watching that just shows some new techniques that I've done and some changes like adding a, uh, a T holder. So since I have this, I can just lay this down here. And again, if you had a hitting mat, it would be the same process. Some give you like templates with them for this very reason or you can always make your own out of a piece of cardboard as well. And you wanna make sure you're just tracing that line all the way around, holding it flat up against it so we get a nice clean drop in. And now that we have it all traced out, we can remove our hitting insert. So basically with the hitting insert, since you're hitting you know, this direction, you wanna make sure to have a nice tight cut front to back. And with the hitting insert, since it dips down, the one I'm using anyway, it needs to kind of retract up after the shot. So you want a little more room on the side. So I'm gonna make my cut inside the white line on front to back so it wedges in there nice and tight front to back. And then I'm gonna cut right on the line for the width to give it just that little bit of space to allow the board to come back up. And now I'm gonna start by getting my level lined up with the line, kind of just hold it down with my knee and then just insert my blade and just hold the blade as straight as possible and follow your straight edge all the way down. And again, I'm gonna move over to this line now. And now for the front and the back, I'm gonna line it up and cut inside the line just barely to retain that nice tight fit. In the corners, I'm gonna kinda just work those carefully so I'm not going outside. It is cut all the way through. All right, one more cut for the back side. Same thing, I'm gonna cut just inside the line. Just make sure to hold that edge flat against the straight edge. Now I can just peel the turf back and see if I got enough space. So I'm gonna drop my board in there and I can see it is tight fit front to back with no movement. And then on the side, I have about an eighth of an inch here and an eighth of an inch here, which is perfect. So that should be good for the board to allow it to come back up. So now I'm just gonna remove this out of the way and I'm gonna do the same process. I'm gonna draw and trace this line. And now I got my cut, so what I do is roll my turf back and pull those gym mats out that are being cut. So that way it's just easier to do it to have a nice straight cut on a tabletop. All right, now with my hitting insert taken out and out of the way, I'm going to just, again, use the level. The goal here with this is to remove the white. So you don't wanna leave any white behind or very little white. So you know that that's a nice tight fit for the hitting insert since we have that cut out in the turf. I'm just gonna start on this side and I'm just basically doing it over the gym mat so I'm not cutting my floors. All right, and I can actually undo these. Just make sure my cuts are clean and all the way through. So I'm just gonna go through here, holding this upright and just go straight down. Move this center piece. I'll just kind of keep this intact in case I wanna pop this back in there if I wanna get rid of the insert for any reason. 
All right, now that that cutout is made, we can just slide it back into place and then we can just drape our turf back over. And if all the measurements were correct, it should be a nice, perfect fit and it is. So now I'm just gonna get a wet rag and wipe off all the chalk marker. All right, and get that all cleaned out so it's ready for the insert. All right, so you can just take your insert now, whatever you decided to go with in the video and just drop it into place. And that's basically it. You guys are all done. Thank you again for watching. This outro is actually filmed three months after everything you guys just watched, but just finally got around to getting the video done. So I have been using this turf for an additional three months from when I shot this video. So quite a while now, and it's holding up great. There's no footwear marks. This is the same insert I've been using that whole time, the same piece of turf, and it still looks great. Really happy I went with it. Um, Please make sure to like and subscribe to the video. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask them down below. And everything you see in my setup and during this process will be in the descriptions down below. We'll catch you guys on the next video.